problem with that is I don't trust a lot of chlorine. If, if it's organic, it might be okay, but I really try to avoid especially any kind of uh, corn or soy that's not organic. Um, if you can find organic versions, you know, uh, I guess it's probably not as bad, but I think there's a lot of better alternatives out there. So, uh, the next thing I would suggest, which can have immediate health benefits, is <coughs> instead of drinking the normal tap water or even a lot of bottled waters, is just doing distilled water. I've only drinking distilled water myself for about three years now. And the, the biggest idea is that there is um, the idea of organic versus inorganic minerals. And this isn't the same as organic versus inorganic food. Uh, the organic minerals are the ones that your body actually needs to survive. So in all the tap water and all these bottled waters, they're putting in the inorganic minerals, which are too big to bypass to the cells. And so anytime someone tells you, oh, don't drink distilled water, you're going to lose out on your vitamins and minerals. You're actually not getting any of them anyways. What you're doing is you're accumulating all these, uh, these inorganic vitamins and minerals which cannot be processed by the body. And eventually they either stay in your body or they get excreted through you know, your kidneys and your liver and the whole process such as that. Uh, one good thing about the uh, distilled water is it actually fl helps flush all these out. Uh, all distilled water is, is the water is just heated to the boiling point so all the impurities are removed and then it's separated from the water and the water then becomes vapor or steam which then eventually condenses back into its, its original water form. So in order to just make sure that you're not putting all of these potential toxins and poisons in your body whether it's from the tap water or all these inorganic minerals and nutrients from even the, the spring of the bottom water uh, I, I recommend just doing distilled water. So I wrote a whole section here in my book on it, and I've noticed some amazing health benefits for myself and people that I work with just by switching to distilled water. And then what's cool is you can always add back in vitamins and minerals to it. If you want that, add in the organic vitamins and minerals to your water. One way I do that myself is through a, a, a daily digestion drink. And I like to recommend this to everyone, especially if you're having heavier meals, because it really helps in the digestion process. So if you just take your distilled water base, add some apple cider vinegar, I like the rags version, and then you can add in cinnamon, which actually helps stabilize your blood sugar, and then you can add in a sweetener, such as a stevia, either a liquid extract or a powder, or you can what add... Is, what does stevia come from? That's a leaf, it's a plant. So, so is mohan, actually, is monk fruit. So they're both plants that have very little to no sugar in them, but it mimics the sweet taste of sugar. And they... What about raw sugar? Well, I don't, I, I've seen, I try to avoid sugar as much as I can, it's still processed, but I'd rather add something that all, all your body is looking for is it's looking for a sweet, um, it's looking for a sweet taste, so just give it the sweet taste, you don't need to add all the extra sugar and calories essentially to it. So in, uh, in Chinese medicine when we're working with people, uh, a lot of times you need more, uh, you need more blood production which is why your body's craving all of these sweet foods. And so by giving it the correct nutrients and vitamins through you know, good greens and juices, and even the lohan and the stevia itself will help that process. It will help give your body what it needs so that you're not craving that anymore. So a lot of times cravings when people want all these really high sugar foods is that your body's lacking something. So you have to give your body what it's actually lacking. You can't give it a substitute. So all these fake sugars out there are just mimicking what your body really needs. So that's why I would recommend you know, these alternatives that are used actually in Chinese medicine and have been for a long time. Uh, and oh, this was an interesting thought to ponder that I thought, uh, just as far as using, say, you know, Chinese medicine, which has been around for 5,000 years, versus you know, modern day medical treatment. So in uh, Robert Mendelssohn, who's a medical doctor, wrote a book called Confessions of a Medical Heretic. And it was concerned with death rates in connection with a doctor's strike in Israel in 1973. So the doctors reduced their daily patient contact from 65,000 people per day to 7,000 people per day. So they just went on strike, they weren't seeing as many people. And during that month, the death rate dropped by 50%. So. I thought that was interesting, and then possibly even more interesting is during his study, he found that 
there had not been such a dramatic decrease in the death rate. Uh, the only time it had happened was 20 years earlier, and it was when the doctors went on strike again for a month, 20 years <laughs> earlier. So, kind of an interesting fact there, like how necessary are these treatments and modalities that are being given. Um, it's just one, one study that I thought would be really interesting to think of. So, uh, you know, perhaps people are better off on their own, you know, working things out for themselves as opposed to following, you know, the, these, uh, the advice of these so-called experts. So, um, and one other way too, this is just uh, what I personally do, and uh, just, this is just one substitute for, I guess, natural, natural food as opposed to like what they're sold in the supermarkets. Um, and if you do your research, one of the things you'll notice is that the majority of these pharmaceutical drugs are just things that are taken from nature, and then there, there are chemicals put into them just so they can patent them. So one of these is aspirin. You know, everyone's probably heard of aspirin out here. All aspirin is, is white willow bark. So you can't patent a tree. You can't patent a white willow bark tree. So in order to make money off of everyone, they have to combine it with chemicals and then sell it to everyone so they can patent it. But at the end of the day, the, the effective part of aspirin is the white willow bark. So just go get white willow bark. And if you look at all these medications, and I've actually done a couple of these, I'll be watching uh, TV and there'll be these like, you know, 60 second ads where they take like 45 seconds to tell you all the side effects of all the things and problems that can cause you. If you actually look up the drug, if you look up the active ingredients, eventually you'll find your way back to the source in nature, which is the part that's actually doing, the, the part that's actually helping people out. So for most parts, if you know people that are taking all these drugs, find out what actually is helpful and what part of the drug is being used. Cut out the chemicals that are being added and just use that part. So that's just one piece of advice. Um, another idea here too uh, for mouthwash, and sometimes it's called oil coating, what you can do instead of using, say, scope or Listerine, from nature what you can do is just mix, uh, mix some coconut oil, which you can find in most stores, and just mix it with the baking soda. Make sure you use aluminum-free baking soda. I like the Bob's Red Milk because you're going to put more heavy metals in your body. And from there, just swish that around in your mouth for five to ten minutes, and it'll help pull a lot of the toxins that get stored in your mouth. It helps to cool them out. Um, just that combination of the, the, the coconut oil and the baking soda. And then what happens is it pulls that out of your mouth and teeth, especially if you have fillings or cavities, it really helps with that. And then you want to make sure don't swallow that. You want to spit that out and then you can rinse your mouth out with water after that and make sure you spit that out too because you don't want to swallow and see all the stuff that gets pulled out. Um, that's a really great way to have mouthwash. Anyone that has, especially problems with canker sores, problems with teeth or cavities, I think that's a great way to start. Um, you know, you can really start reversing your health or your dental uh, just by doing that every day. So, here's a couple, here's a couple quick videos that I'll show to everyone. This is, let's see. So I'm gonna be moving on now to more of the health stuff, so to more, uh, to more yoga, and uh, just yoga and stretching. Here is a, can everyone see this?
could do that here. Most of those people are exercising that before they need to do. Yeah, exactly. Second part of the video, though, that was actually uh, my friend Mike. That was one of the places I had worked at for a while at Perfect Competition. So uh, he actually, we were training guys for the NFL Combine and doing all this stuff, and now he's uh, focusing solely on uh, just doing the yoga for a lot of these guys. So you can see a lot of these, uh, a lot of these pro athletes are all doing uh, this higher level of you know, yoga and the nutrition too, and it's just not something that's getting around to the mainstream. So. Here's another uh, a good example. I don't know if anyone's seen this before. This is uh, Bruce Lee with uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Oh. Oh, I 
是不是要怎样的？<笑>
just uh, find out what position you spend a lot of time in each day and try to do the opposite and stretch out you know, those places that get tight. And over time, it, eventually things will loosen up and um, you'll be able to get back to your original length of your tendons, ligaments, and muscles. And a lot of it can you know, help a lot of the pain go away. And then one more aspect, which I think uh, could be really important to start doing now is uh, what I call thigh squeezing and it's just squeezing all the different uh, muscle groups in your body. So you can just start off and just you know, sit here, like squeeze all your toes, uh, you know, just squeeze your quad, squeeze your hamstrings, and people would be surprised at how difficult it is to like, really just contract one muscle for maybe like 10 or 15 seconds. Because you're so not used to working the muscles individually, everyone ends up you know, walking around all day and you're not really thinking about what you're doing. And sometimes muscle groups have a tendency to stop working or one will dominate over the other. Uh, so one area that I especially recommend people to do is like your glutes. So just do glute squeezing. Uh, so then you can just lie down on the floor and just you can you know bend your leg here and just focus on just squeezing your glute. Your glute's the strongest muscle in the body, and most people when they're walking aren't even really using it. Sometimes a lot of times you see how uh, your quads will dominate or your hamstrings will dominate, and anytime you're not using your glutes, it's just putting all that extra pressure on your lower back. So really focus on squeezing the individual groups. You can also just squeeze your lower back. Try to just stand up and just squeeze those lower back muscles. And uh, you'd be surprised at how difficult it is to start just mentally focusing and squeezing you know, one individual muscle or one muscle group. And as you get better with it over time, you'll notice too your body starts functioning better and you can walk around better. And a lot of the pain will go away because your body is working as a whole unit and you're not having your uh, dominant muscle groups take over. So, that's one area where I would certainly recommend that you can do every day at home, you know, even if you only have 5, 10, 15 minutes, try to just start stretching some of the places where you're tight or that, you know, get in positions where you're not used to. And then also just squeeze some of your muscle groups every day. So, um, to end here, I always like to go over this study just to show you the, the real uh, limits of human potential. So, there was a study here, this was actually done at Southern Methodist University, SMU, and I was actually at the lab where this took place. And they did, four researchers from three universities conducted the study, and it was published by Science Daily, and it was titled, uh, Human Running Speeds of 35 to 40 Miles Per Hour May Be Possible. And one of the researchers, Matthew Bundle, in the article states, our simple projections indicate that muscle contractile speeds that would allow for maximal or near maximal forces would permit running speeds of 35 to 45, 35 to 40 miles per hour and conceivably faster. So what they found out is actually it's possible um, anytime you like jump up in the air just real quick, you're actually utilizing muscle groups that would enable you to go forward at 35 to 40 miles per hour. The problem that they're finding is that people's bodies end up shutting off those muscle groups in order to protect itself. So if you were able to essentially, you know, mentally get over the idea, they're saying that the human body has the potential to run at those speeds, which is significantly faster than any human has ever been found to run. Um, so again, just showing you that there's really no limit to human potential here. It's just, uh, I guess, people's own limiting beliefs and their own body of preventing them from doing what they're showing is scientifically and mathematically possible. Um, so I guess with that in regards, just realize that you know, everyone here is in a certain level of health now and just try to take a couple different steps every day and try to improve that level of health. So uh, I saw an uh, interesting interview, Jim Harbaugh I think was at Miami University doing an interview on a show I was watching yesterday and he said, if you just get yourself 1% healthier tomorrow, than you were today, and then the next day you get yourself 1% healthier, and every day you're just focusing on doing, say, one little thing, like today I'm just going to do 15 minutes of yoga, tomorrow I'm going to make myself a juice, uh, tomorrow, you know, I'm going to go for a walk, and then if you just do those little things every day, a week or a month from now, I think you'll be impressed at how much better you feel, and uh, you'll be able to get to the realization that there's no limit to health, you know, if you start doing this for a year, two years, there's really no limit to what you can achieve. So if your goal is to get healthier and reduce pain, uh, you certainly can do that. There's no reason why anyone here can't do that. So thank you very much. If anyone else has any questions. What about cardio exercise? I mean, you got a lot of stretching. How important is that? Well, one of the interesting things that they've found about cardio is in order to 
flush the heart out, actually the best thing to do it is to do like back bends or to do a wheel. Uh, if you can't do that, just put your legs in the air. Because what you need is you actually, your body's used to being upright. So in order to reverse itself and flush the heart out, you need to put yourself upside down. So as far as doing, as far as doing actual cardio, um, what, what I've personally found and through a lot of the research is most of what is considered cardio here, actually what you're doing is you're just doing adrenaline fatigue. So you're basically running off of your fight or flight syndrome. So if you're gonna put yourself on a treadmill and try to run and kill yourself until you're out of breath, all the only benefits you're getting is you're getting better at um, escaping death, is what, I would, I was, is what I would have to say. So the body goes into a certain mode when it's afraid and scared, and when you fatigue it that much, basically you're just tra traumatizing your body. And so what happens is your adrenal glands and all that, and this is why so many people have adrenal problems, um, it kicks up and your body freaks out trying to recover itself. So in order to actually get your heart better and working better, you need to expand the area in your chest where the heart is, and your heart needs to grow. So in order to do that, you need to stretch the heart and the chest cavity out, and by doing that, it's by doing a back bend or putting your legs up in the air and really flushing that heart out. So does that make sense? Um, otherwise, you're just getting better. You're just getting your body better at... But what about light cardio? I'm not talking about... Oh, no, no, no. That, this I room think... is not going to be runners. <laughs> No, 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 I'm just saying, you know, I like, think that's great. Getting getting the heart actually going and beating yeah. faster is fine, but uh, especially don't you overdo don't it. What you're saying, it. Yeah. yeah, for that. So every once in a while, yeah, if you're a professional athlete, you're going out, and you have to push yourself to those limits. But if you're trying to just get normal states of health, honestly, instead of going on a treadmill and killing yourself every day, you'd be better just laying down and putting your feet up in the air. It's my personal preference, or just doing the yoga, stretch, stretch for ten minutes. Believe me, if you're pushing yourself. That'll get yourself, that'll get your heart going too. How about walking? So, mm -hmm. walking. Oh, walk, walking is great. Right? There's no problem. So, you're walking. saying pushing is it necessary? Right. Well, no, traumatizing your body to the point where, um, again, your adrenals kick in. And, like, you see a lot of people here doing like, the CrossFit and P90X and all that, where you're really pushing yourself. All that, in my opinion, is doing is you're just getting better able to tolerate pain. So if that's what your goal is, then you should do that. But if you're just trying to get yourself healthy, start eating better and start doing some of the yoga, awesome stretching, and yeah, go for go for a walk every day. That would be that would be a really good great place to start. So people, a lot of times, people in here try to balance their horrible diets with the working out. And in my opinion, there's no way that that's ever going to do it. You can't go to McDonald's and Burger King and then come here and try to kill yourself because it's actually a double whammy here. Eating horrible food and putting that stuff into your body, and then when you come here, all you're doing is traumatizing yourself, trying to like get rid of it. And this is why you see people having all these issues at really young ages because they're not really in a level of health. Just because you may look good, you know, when you take your shirt off and all that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a level of health. So. You know, the key is uh, flexibility and balance. Flexibility will actually help you maintain better balance. And uh, internally, it's just eating more of the foods that are closer to nature. So, again, the closer you are to nature and getting your body back to its originally perfect length. So, everyone here talks about when they get older, they're getting shorter. What's funny enough is myself, is I've actually found myself growing taller over the past couple of years. You know, tell that to any of the scientists, they'll say it's impossible, but if you create more space in your spine, you'll get taller. So if your body, if your hamstrings are really tight, and you need to stretch every day and you create more space there, they're gonna get longer. It's just a simple mathematical equation. So does that make sense? Great, anyone else? Any other? Detox? Well, part of this is essentially detoxing. So your body every day is accumulating uh, toxins and uh, there's a lot of studies that say people actually will get cancer cells in their body every single day from the air, the food, the water. And so the ability of your body's natural um, defense system to be able to get rid of those, your immune system, will determine whether or not you get sick from that. So all detoxing, is do all detoxing means is putting foods and water into your body that will help pull the toxins out. So the distilled water is a really good way to do that. Uh, the juice, all juicing is, is distilled water plus vitamins and minerals. That's all these fruits and vegetables are. 
you look at the actual makeup there, uh, the still water plus you know the different vitamins and minerals that are inside of them. That's why when you stick them in a juicer, it is create the liquid water, the like still water. And so all the detox is doing is trying to pull those out of your body. And so yeah, there's there's lots of different ways to do that, but I think for most people, the easiest way to start is just start doing some juicing, just start uh, drinking the still water. And I think you start noticing some really good benefits. Again, for most people doing something crazy drastic, like not eating for three days or a week, or doing only uh, you know lemon water and uh, maple syrup and all these different ones, uh, people can get results from it. But if you're going to maintain something on a lengthy basis, just do something you can stick to every day. How do you get your calories if all you're eating is mostly juice? Well, I would say focus more on getting the vitamins and minerals and nutrients in your body as opposed to a certain amount of calories. But don't you have to have like so many calories to maintain? Not really. I mean, if you look up the definition of a calorie, it refers to being able to, you know, the ability to set something on fire and burn at a certain temperature. And so, you know, from a chemistry equation, there's not necessarily any specific amount that people need. So I've heard of monks living off of spirulina in the sunlight. Some of them, there was one I think recently who went 14 days without eating or drinking any water. So if you look at the extreme possibilities, again, there's no limit to health. So I think calories are more of a certain mindset as far as you do. If you eat a thousand calories of pohos and a thousand calories versus say, you know, cucumber juice and say orange and carrots, you're going to have a completely different outcome. So anyone who's looking at calories, I think you're not, you know, you're not doing yourself a very good service. Focus in putting good things <laughs> into your body. That would be great. <laughs> so again, if you, honestly, if you were to eat, say, if you were to put 4,000 calories versus worth of, say, fruits and vegetables in your body, you'd probably end up losing weight, even if you're only used to, say, having maybe two or 3,000 calories. Again, as long as it's not all sugar, people tend to go a little bit more the sugar. But just focus on nutrients, don't focus on calories. So, is what I'm putting into my body, is it going to make my body healthier? How close to nature are the substances I'm putting into my body? And then you don't have to worry about calories. So, um, in order to feel full, you need nutrients, not a certain amount of calories. And what's possible, I'm sure, is you found, you can eat an entire bag of chips, an entire uh, thing of pretzels and cookies and all that, and you'll still be hungry after. <laughs> you know, people get depressed and eat entire ice cream, gallons of ice, ice cream, cream and they still need more. It's because the body craves the nutrients. Hey. And uh, some of the studies I've read, actually a lot of these companies will uh, find ways to mimic the actual nutrients. So I know uh, a few of them have even done laboratory tests in order to feel, oh, the body craves this vitamins, and it craves this minerals. So we're going to create a fake substance which tricks your body into thinking that it's satisfied by that for, say, 10 or 15 minutes. And then afterwards it wears off and your body thinks you need it again. But instead of getting the original one, you're just going to eat the fake one again. So say you eat a couple cookies and your body's like, wow, great, I needed that. My body's all full. And then, you know, 10 minutes later, you're like, wait, I need more. I, I need more cookies because those are the nutrients. But it's not the real thing. So it's all these dead artificial additives that they put into it that are tricking the body and it's not real nutrition. So again, the key to think about when you're eating is how close to nature is this food I'm putting in my body. I think if you just stick to that, everything else will end up working itself out. If you just try to get a little closer to nature with every meal, I think you're gonna end up feeling a lot better. Doesn't that juice stuff taste terrible? <laughs> no, that's why my last recipe was put in whatever you like. I'm sure everyone here can find a fruit or a vegetable that they like. And I think the key too, especially, is if you mix it with cucumber or celery, most people will like one or the other. You know, cucumber is really mostly water. So if you can do a half or three quarters of cucumber and mix that with, say, an orange or apple. some grapes or an apple, and it'll be mostly that apple taste which you like with, you know, the cucumber which is just distilled water, but you'll get all the health benefits of it. So find things that you, that you taste. You don't want to do anything that's going to be that you're going to hate doing because you're not going to keep doing it. It's all going to be just for a waste if you only do it for three days and go back to what you're normally doing. So like the juice would be your meal? 
It could be. I've done pretty much only juice before, and I haven't had any issues. Um, I'm not saying you necessarily have to do that, but the key is even if you just add the juice into what you're doing normally, you're going to feel better because you're going to be getting all those vitamins and minerals that you normally weren't getting. So I've, we've had cases, I've had someone who just started doing a bunch of juice in an hour and lost 10 pounds. Just through that hour because they just did a, drink a bunch of juice and their body was holding on to so much uh, inflammation. You know, your body's so inflamed because it's not actually getting in real food, it's just storing it, that it was able to just let all of it go. So, you know, cases like that, and we've had a UNLV professor we worked with lost uh, about 30 pounds in 30 days by not working out, he said, just by, you know, adding some juice and raw foods into this. And we've had a lot of success with people just by doing what they're normally doing and adding in more of the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients and stuff like that. So a lot of times you're eating empty calories is what that what you're saying? So yeah, yeah, if you, want, if you want to call it that, that's absolutely true. So. Again, the closer it is to nature, you know, all, all empty calories are something that's very far away from nature. So you can't really eat a salad of empty calories. It's really hard to, you know, if you go to a fast food joint, it's really hard to find anything there that's any close to nature. Most of it's been cut down, stored, sometimes possibly year, years, you know, who knows how long they've had that stuff frozen for. And then they heat it up, and it's already dead, and they kill it even more, and then they serve it to you. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, why that sounds good. Going to McDonald's. <laughs> okay, if I gave you five dollars, would you get a ho ho? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's all I want. Right. <laughs> every every vegetarian vegan has his price. Is that what it is? Just ask. Just ask. Just throw it out there. I have heard of this contest. I think between some poker players and some other ones where they have that significant amount of money to have someone do that. But you know. So five bucks wouldn't cut it. <laughs> no, I don't think that's going to so. <laughs> I mean, by the time I actually eat that, the five bucks would probably be only worth a couple cents with the rate the inflation is going. But, you know. <laughs> and do you ever go to a doctor or anything? Or? Well, I work with Dr. Lisa, so anytime I've had any issues, which hasn't really been anything serious well, over the young. years, yeah. I, I, talk to, I talk to them, but... I don't really see much of a reason to. Most of the stuff, you can get a lot of information online. And if you really do your research, you know, say you do go to the doctor and prescribe you something, find those actual ingredients in there that are active and are doing that. And maybe try that first. You know, I'm not a doctor. You need to talk to your individual doctors about that. I can't give medical advice. But for me personally, um, the only way you're going to see me in a hospital is if I'm unconscious. I just don't see anything there that they can do for me that I couldn't do better on my own. Um, one of our patients actually was the head of all the hospitals in, uh, in a certain region. I don't want to you know, give away any of the stuff that want to getting out, but you're saying more people actually get sick by going to the hospital than even come in. So I don't really see the point. You saw the study there with the doctors in Israel where more people are dying you know, just by going to normal treatment. So me personally, I'm going to avoid that as much as possible. I think Chinese medicine has had it figured out for about 5,000 years now. And, you know, I guess going again back to nature, don't really have any issues. You can go online, you can see them giving heart surgeries in China by using just a couple of acupuncture needles. The patient's completely awake. But, you know, how much money can a hospital make if all you need to do is do a couple of um, acupuncture needles, a scalpel, fix everything up, and then, you know, you can't charge 10, 20, 100,000 dollars for the surgery. Yet. So, in my personal belief, I would find solutions to your problems that are as close to nature as possible and try those out first. Um, a lot of times what we see, especially at the, the clinics I work with, is people do the opposite. They try every other modality possible, and then they try the more, what I would call, natural or, or holistic. And then finally, you know, they're willing to, like, once they've exhausted every other option possible, they come here, and I've seen a lot of